Hey Fit Pros, it's your host Tyler Valencia here. I quickly want to share a free resource we have on the KIPS website and YouTube channel. If you're struggling with your online workouts or just want to see the items that we recommend, check out our virtual training resources page. You'll find breakdowns on streaming setups, reviews on microphones, and other free videos that can help you build your fitness business today. Did I mention they're free? Go check them out at the link in the description or head over to our website to find them under the blog tab. Welcome to the Kips Podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia and I'm the president of Kips and Time to Train Fitness. I'm super excited for this episode for our listeners, not just because it's on a topic, YouTube, which I'm a big fan of, but because of the traffic that we've been getting from this guest podcast episode his first episode that we did with us we have jason cohen he is the producer creative director he's kaylee cohen's husband he is here to talk about youtube the recipe for building your community engagement all these topics that people that have seen heard or even talked about with their friends with youtube we're gonna go over a lot of great content in here i'm just gonna say right now and i'm super excited as you can probably tell i'm talking fast that jason and i were talking prior to hitting that record button on this end. It is just loaded. This episode is going to be loaded with great content for our listeners to take away immediately, apply with their business. So tune in, take notes, listen to it again. Jason, thank you for coming on the Kips podcast. Yeah, thank you, Tyler. Thanks for having me. Let's set the stage up again. Uh, if you are new to the podcast listeners, Jason's going to briefly talk about his background before we jump into YouTube stuff. But Jason, can you give the listeners some insight into yourself and your uh, work in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my work in the industry. Yeah. I was a personal trainer uh, as I was leaving the military and exercise science major in college and then ended up defaulting right back into aviation when I realized that I was 30 years, 35 years old and in college. But I grew up skateboarding and with skateboarding, I always had a camera in my hand. I've always had that creative side to me too. So fitness is a big part of my life. Fitness is a big part of Kaylee's life. And around 2019, they kind of collided whenever Kaylee wanted to put an indoor cycling class on YouTube for her mom to do. We live in Dubai, so her mom was able to do her workouts via YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to practice my creative side with cameras and editing and things like that. So. And from there, it just kind of compounded and the snowball kept growing and getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I love it. I've heard that story, I think, three times now because I did one episode with you and one with Kaylee. And I just love it, the the intentions for it, but even just the growth from it. At the current moment, what are you guys at with subscribers? Uh, over 130,000 on <sighs> one channel and <laughs> almost 10,000 on another. Nice. I love it. I love it. I think when we recorded for the first time, you guys were around 66. So definitely double and more yeah. um, in that time span was just amazing. And with that comes some type of mixture, some creative juice and a recipe that you guys are building and constantly working on. I know that you and I have talked about strategies and you are someone that constantly looks and seeks out that information for growth in these areas. It's not just, okay, I'm going to go teach a workout. I'm going to flip on that camera, turn my microphone on and rock and roll. You're, there's more outside of it. And I think that's part of that. We talked about the creative director side, the creative side that you love. And I think to kick this off, to give some good nuggets of what we're going to be talking about this episode, can you talk about your give and receive, uh, the recipe, and also compare that to, uh, we were talking about sell and you will receive model. So the give and receive and then sell and you will receive model. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Let me just start with, I think there's probably going to be two types of people what are listening to this podcast right now. Um, we're all fitness professionals or creative in nature. And if you're considering YouTube, you're probably listening to this podcast and you're either, you're either thinking YouTube is too crowded and it's too saturated. And that's why you've been hesitant to start publishing on YouTube, or you think that you can't afford the gear to start on YouTube. So I'm going to kind of debunk both of those today when we talk about the recipe for success. And um, yeah, the very first thing that I'm going to say about that is go to YouTube as a give and you'll receive model as opposed to a sell and you'll receive. So the I guess the big thing there is you don't want to start YouTube to make money. 
it is a long process. It's a marathon. The growth is very slow, but it's also very rewarding. So approach the platform as a give and you'll receive. Um, be passionate about whatever content that it is that you want to create. So whether it's publishing workouts or whether you want to go to the platform to talk about fitness related things or nutrition or whatever it is that you want to talk about, make sure you're absolutely passionate about it um, because it is going to be your life, especially once it starts growing and once it starts building, it's a lot of work, a lot of hours dedicated to the platform. And just like any, any business or any, any one that succeeds on YouTube, you're basically identifying a problem and presenting a solution. And that's, that's exactly what you do. So if you're thinking about joining or, or publishing on YouTube, make sure that you do enough research and the niche and the, where the subjects that you're going to be talking about and see what's missing out of the people that are on YouTube already. Uh, every, every industry is saturated on YouTube and there's still people coming onto the platform, growing huge communities. Uh, they're just finding that avenue or that route where they're slightly different than someone else or bringing a different approach to it. And that's where communities are made. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to fight myself right now with which area to go in now. I think the first one before we'll come back to community because that is such a key item, a key word these days for fitness pros in general. We didn't really think about community until the last two years. But before, because uh, there was something interesting that you and I talked about with the, the tech and you mentioned it with the people think that they don't have the budget to invest in the, the cameras, the lights, the microphones. And I mean, just before we started recording, we were joking about buying new equipment and because uh, you and I, we like that kind of stuff. We like different kinds of microphones. We like getting new cameras, looking up tutorials on cameras. That oh, kind I love of stuff. the tech. <laughs> and so not everybody's like that. Fit pros, we know that that stuff's not anywhere in any entry level certification. Um, a lot of the instructors that I speak with about online workouts, they don't even know that their phone can be used. Can you actually talk about what did you guys have when you first started? And when you looked around at stuff that you had, what did that setup look like? Because I think that that's something that people can look around their, themselves. And what would your advice be as well for for instructors in that boat? Yeah, that's funny because the second ingredient to, to this success on YouTube is um, story is king and not gear. Mm -hmm. So when Kaylee asked me at the time, I was actually on YouTube making skateboarding videos with mm -hmm. our five-year-old son. Mm -hmm. And that's where my focus was. I was enjoying making skateboard videos with him, uh, going to different skate parks. So I was, I was actually a, a little overwhelmed when Kaylee asked me to film one of her workouts for her mom. And at the time she used her phone to begin with, and she filmed one that way with her phone, mm -hmm. which is perfectly fine. That's the, you know, if that's what's accessible, it films just as good as anything else. Yeah. The camera that I had was maybe one step up from a phone. It's not, it wasn't a professional level camera by any means. Mm -hmm. uh, and we only had one camera at a little shotgun mic on top. And that's mm -hmm. how we started. <laughs> but to go back to the story is the king, story is king, not gear. Mm -hmm. You can look on YouTube and see that story is what keeps people engaged, not the video or quality. Um, audio quality is, is important. And I would recommend that if you're going to upgrade anything, you always upgrade your audio first, but focus on the story. If, um, if you're worried about having the best gear to get on, to start on YouTube, absolutely. Don't worry about that. Start with mm -hmm. a phone, start mm -hmm. making videos, getting used to talking to your phone and let it grow from there. Yeah. Let's jump into that a little bit more. I'm going to give some background too into this because I always think it's fun to to break that break that wall, we'll call it, um, almost like breaking the fourth wall in movies that with any podcast episode, and I've said this before, that there's always background stuff. There's chit chatting prior to hitting the record button and it's all, there's preparation that goes into it. And there was a, there was a moment too that I had that aha moment talking with Jason and with the whole story building that I've heard this many times and we're getting along that lines. And you're probably, if you're listening in, you just heard Jason talk about storytelling. You're like, well, how do you, like, where does that come in? Like, where is that a part of a workout? And you've probably done it 20, 
30 times or your whole career, if you're, you're a veteran, that you've done this and you just haven't connected the dots with it. Jason, can you dive in a little bit deeper into the storytelling and talking about the tensions and how that builds within a workout and then connect it to cycling? Because I think that that is actually the part where a lot of listeners will have that light bulb go in their head like, oh, wait, I, I already know how to do that. How do I double down on that? I'm going to start with actually knowing exactly who your audience is, knowing exactly who that person is that you're making that you're making content for and mm-hmm. understanding, let's say you're filming fitness workouts or a workout, a strength workout or a cycling workout, whatever the case is. If you know who is watching your video, you're going to know when they're going to start struggling. You're going to kind of know when that tension's building right mm-hmm. towards the towards the last little bit of that working part or the higher intensity part, you know, that person's struggling, you know, the tension is building. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've got music that's kind of synced along with that too, the music plays a big role in that. And it's being able to identify those points of tension and relating an equal resolution at the end of that tension as well. Mm-hmm. So a story can have multiple points of tension and resolution whenever you're talking about like a three part story with a beginning, middle and end. Um, that middle part, let's say is the workout. And it's going to have multiple, multiple peaks of tension and resolution, and then one big resolution or character transformation at the end. Uh, and even go into that character transformation after the workout is over and doubling down on that. You've, you've just gone through, not only has your viewer gone through a character transformation, but you as an instructor have also transformed in some, some sort of way. And that connection that you have with the viewer, that's what builds community there is, having that intimate moment of character transformation. Yeah. I think where I can hopefully uh, relate this to myself as well is uh, when I hire instructors for my company time to train, a lot of what I tell them at the beginning is we just got to get you going so that we can start that growth period and learn about your teaching style and build your on-screen presence. I think there's a lot of people in that same boat that probably been teaching for a while online for maybe the last two years even that they haven't realized this part of it that you can integrate that story into it and build the tension and exactly what you're talking about here that's both parties will have growth through it and i think that it's a process where somebody will learn a lot about themselves and the workouts that they create and why it's important to prepare all these items for not just youtube and what you're, the content you're trying to create, but it's going to make your programs better. You are taking a, d- a deeper dive into these programs, whether it's cycling, hit workouts, strength training workouts. You're diving into them in order to get a feeling from somebody, create that connection. And uh, it just starts to just, my mind is just endlessly going now with that part of the story building within it, with the tension in the, uh, the one that came to my mind. Uh, having taken Kaylee's classes, doing other cycling classes, is how that resistance on the bike jumps with, I think, a lot of instructors for them. It's like that music. They hear that music and all of a sudden the beat drops and then they're just cycling it out. But that tension that built up before and even how the instructor engages them and with the storytelling, whether it's motivation or they're tying in a piece of their life or what day it is or something's coming up, all of a sudden that everybody that's in the class is just going and they're, they're feeling it. They're like, Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. And then all of a sudden it drops and they just cycle their hearts out. And I feel like that's one of the pieces that we, we know we've, we've done it. We just haven't connected those dots and then expanded it further with your, the intro, the, um, the, the closing, your cool down, all these types of things. So it's such an interesting topic to think about. So I know that I've jumped around here. I want to make sure that we go through your recipe here. I think it's three items that, um, are part of it. And I know you've talked about some of them. What have I missed? Um, so we started with give, don't sell. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second one was story is king, not gear. Mm-hmm. And then the third one is speak to one viewer. Um, mm. I see this a lot on YouTube where someone opens up a YouTube video and they're like, hey guys, welcome to my channel. Mm-hmm. Well, there's not a lot of guys sitting around one <laughs> TV watching your YouTube channel, right? It's probably <laughs> one person. Um, so <laughs> the uh, 
that speak to one person, uh, know exactly who your target audience is, know exactly who that person is and speak directly to them. Uh, and one thing that I would say is, that's been a huge factor of growth for us is Kaylee is not afraid to laugh at herself. Mm -hmm. She messes up all the time. It doesn't bother her. She'll laugh at herself with you while you're watching the YouTube video. So be vulnerable, open yourself up. Don't approach YouTube as I want to be the perfect instructor. I want to teach the perfect class because that's not YouTube. Be, mm -hmm. be, be willing to make mistakes. Um, people like seeing that that's a human on the screen and not a, not a professional or an actor or a business or just be a human show that you're show that you make mistakes, laugh at yourself with the viewer. And, uh, that's another great way to make that emotional connection with your viewer and yeah. build community. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I've said that one for my instructors for maybe, Oh, the last year is that when you do make a mistake, how do you handle it? Do you fall apart on screen? Do you take it and then it just compounds further that you find yourself making more mistakes and you're beating yourself up about it on screen and all of a sudden you get to the end and you're just thinking, oh, I made so many mistakes in that workout. Like, how do I, how do I go back from this? And then now it's going to eat you up on future ones because you want to then be perfect. Instead, think about how you can process it and also move on from it in a way that shows your personality. Exactly what you're saying, Jason, that that's part of your on-screen presence and people like that. I've told that to um, one of my instructors that I know she'll probably be listening to this is that I love when she makes mistakes because she jokes about it and you see a little bit of that personality come out and you say, yep. oh, that, that that's that's who they are. And yep. it, you for myself, it always puts a smile on my face and I'm sure other people do the same because yep. it, it just breaks that, that very little. And you're like, oh, wow, yep. they are human. It's such a- It also drives engagement. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Right? Like someone's going to remember that mistake. They're going to make a comment about it. It's going to mm -hmm. drive engagements. Um, yeah. And that's another viewer signal that YouTube looks at to give more impressions for your video. So. Yeah. Yep. 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 Let's jump back to community and- with community, oh my goodness, I feel like I've heard community, community, community for just beaten around for so long. And I feel like some instructors are probably in this boat that they just don't know where to start or they're worried about it. And I think in the first episode, you talked about how it'll come, community will come. And especially with a, a YouTube model, some people might think, well, how, how am I going to do it with YouTube? Like you're putting these free workouts out and I, I just don't know where I'm going to go. Like how, who's going to, who's going to watch them? How do I get them into my community? What have been some strategies that you've seen work with what you guys got going on? We probably published 20 videos. I'm taking a guess here, probably about 20 videos before we actually started having, we would get occasional comments. We would get a few views on each video. But it wasn't until I started kind of following Primal Branding by Patrick Hanlon and the principles to Primal Branding that he talks about and really paying attention to what the comments were about and paying attention to the words or the phrases and things that Kaylee said during the workouts. And, and that's when we kind of started building the community based off of those principles. And once that community started building the the comments on the videos were growing. Yeah, it just kind of snowballed from there. Yeah, the main strategy that we that we used was based off of Patrick Hanlon's Primal Branding, and you can find his TED Talk on YouTube. You can mm -hmm. get his book if you want. I didn't go as far as the book, um, but I did watch the TED Talk and kind of broke down each one of those those principles that he talks about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the next one that I kind of want to jump into, we're talking more about the business stuff and... Um, you know, the applying this as a fitness professional to a model that you can build on. And I think you, a key word from earlier in the episode was that you talked about this being a marathon with YouTube. And I, I've, I see it constantly. So I'm a second voice in this episode saying that Jason is a hundred percent correct with it, that YouTube is a marathon. I'm in that marathon right now. And it's one of those things that you got to make sure you love it. You got to make sure that you want to invest your time into it because it's exactly what Jason said. 
there's a lot of time involved with it. And so with YouTube being a valuable business strategy for a fitness professional, in your opinion now, why? Why can it be a valuable strategy or a valuable tool for fit pros? Um, I think if you're looking at coming into this, you don't necessarily have to be an authority figure, but if you want to be an authority figure in the YouTube space or, or in the online space or in the fitness industry, using YouTube as a platform to start building that authority, even if you don't consider yourself an authority, an authority figure yet, say you're new to the fitness industry, you can still start building a community on YouTube that's going to, that you're going to take along on your journey to becoming an authority on YouTube. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, tech reviewers kind of did that, that same space. Maybe they weren't a professional photographer, but they just loved photography and they wanted to share it with other people. And now they're getting paid as a professional photographer, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, and the, the way they got clients was on YouTube um, or from people seeing their videos. So if you go back to this from a, I guess, a fitness point of view, Kaylee again started publishing videos to YouTube just to share with her mom. And then as things grew, neither one of us, I have a full-time job. Um, Kaylee is a, a stay-at-home mom. She loves being at home with the kids. And she was teaching spin classes before when we lived in Riyadh, but it was kind of a, a couple of classes a week, just as something to kind of break up the, the time and to do something there. But she really enjoyed being a stay-at-home mom and she didn't go to YouTube to try to grow a business. So as it evolved, now we've both taken a deeper dive into this and started looking at, well, how can this be a business? Um, I mean, I put probably, I work 40 hours a week in my full-time job and I probably put more than 40 hours a week on the YouTube side of things. Wow. Um, so, and I do want to make that transition to where I am full-time Kaylee Cohen Fitness, mm -hmm. just like she is. But she, ever since two, or 2020, she's been full-time into this and wanting to build it and grow it. And we've started kind of building a team of contractors, graphic designer, copywriter, things like that to, to help us kind of start evolving and, and building what we want to have. But yes, yeah, it's, it's started from um, our I think our first paycheck from YouTube was $150 mm -hmm. in uh, the beginning of 2020. And now we've continued building that business model about give and you will receive. And now we're up to nine different revenue streams and and still seeing a lot of growth. And that um, what's even better than that is the response that we're getting from our community and how many people's lives that we're changing. And that's actually the driving force behind all of this is uh, is seeing our community transform and seeing our community, how much we're impacting people's lives. That's yeah. kind of what pushes me to wake up so early every morning, come right to the computer, work before I go to work, come home from work and start work again, and then go to sleep <laughs> and wake up and do it all over again. So, Yeah. A cool thing that I'll say that I realized from the outside with being a fan of the channel. And I remember when I first started following you guys, and I feel like it was almost like a reverse model of what people think the way that social media and YouTube work together and having an audience is that I remember when I started following you guys that I believe like you guys' Instagram was maybe under a thousand, maybe I think it was, uh, I don't remember the exact number, but your YouTube channel helped grow your other areas. It helped yeah. grow your, your audience, your followings. And people, I think, believe like, oh, I have to have an audience first in order to do X, Y, Z, to start a YouTube channel, to grow my community. And really, you guys are proving right now that it, it could be any way, but it's almost yeah. you guys focused on one thing, the YouTube channel, then it helped all the area, other areas with the community, all that, that came along, the audience came along, the following on, on Instagram, on Facebook, all that stuff fell in place after which is almost the opposite of what everybody thinks on yeah. social media. They just think I have to have thousands of thousands of followers. I have to make my reels. I have to do my TikToks. I have to do my, my daily posts. And then all of a sudden, then I can do whatever it is I need to do with YouTube or community. We actually only focused on YouTube. Kaylee still does not like social media. <laughs> um, she doesn't even have a personal Facebook anymore. Um, and her... Her Instagram and Facebook now are Kaylee Cohen Fitness, but 
she doesn't like social media and the fact that regardless of what she looks like on camera, she's not an extrovert. She's an introvert. She's mm -hmm. very introverted. So yeah, we, we focused on one on only on YouTube and that, and YouTube kind of helped grow Instagram and Facebook. And then we didn't really have a strategy for Facebook or Instagram. It just kind of evolved when you start breaking down, like we can talk about this too, but you can talk about each platform has its own purpose. Um, so when you're repurposing content, you're not going to make, you're not going to film a workout video and just start publishing it to every platform that you can. You want to focus on one platform. If YouTube is going to be your long form content, that's going to be your workout or that's going to be the place where you make an eight minute video talking about the benefits of hit or whatever the case is that one long form content is where you're going to pull a couple of short form content things out and put on the other platforms. So we know what people do on Instagram. We know how Instagram stories work, how Instagram posts or videos work. We know what Facebook is used for. So it's about being specific and knowing what each platform is used for. Well, yeah. Once it starts growing like that, but yeah, focus on one platform. I personally am an ambassador for YouTube. I think YouTube now that I've actually been there and learned and I've done all this stuff. I think YouTube is the, the best platform uh, for any, anyone to be on right now. Yeah. Um, I think my mom should be on YouTube right now, but <laughs> anyways, yeah. YouTube is a very viewer centric and a creator first platform. There we go. There we go. The idea I want to, or the topic I want to just spin off of there is that I know that people tuning in for this episode, a lot of the listeners will be very similar to Kaylee in the aspect that does not, they don't like social media. They are, they, they are, were stay at home moms that they are very passionate, passionate about helping people with fit health and fitness. And they almost feel that pressure to go on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook to do things uh, and create posts and that pressure. Uh, and they, it almost gets to them in, a, in an aspect that they didn't, don't want to post. And so yeah. I feel like it's, it's awesome that you shared that because this can be a light bulb for somebody listening to the episode and say, oh, that could be me. Why don't I just focus my attention on what I do like to do with making workouts and not worry about those extra pieces after. And it's a way it, that this podcast, those are those things I like to highlight because I know there's, I, I hands down, I know there's somebody in that boat right now that's listening. So with being a, an introvert myself, then some people might be surprised. Some people might not, depending on how well, well they know me. Um, I know that there's a, often been times where I won't post on Instagram f for like months or a month because I j it's just not part of my life. I don't really, uh, social media, I know it's there, um, but it uh, it's not something that takes over my life. Um, I have no problem just like setting aside, okay, I won't post for a while. And this year I've tried to make more effort with it, but it, it can be very over overwhelming it, and it can be. Um, I can see how it can take people down a rabbit hole where they see different posts and that pressure then builds up. How how do I make content like that? How do I make my audio sound that good? How do I look like that? I think that's the big one is how people will start to compare themselves with, with looks. So um, just sharing that kind of stuff is, I think, very meaningful. Um, and I kind of want to go back now after that, uh, that tangent there about we talk about with different revenue streams because... That's something that fit pros should, from the beginning, think about, that you're not just going to be training people nine to five. I think people have realized that, that you're not just a nine to five person when you come into this industry, and that oftentimes people that do make it past a year, two years in the fitness industry, that they have different revenue streams, that they're doing different things to make this a career. With you guys, with yourself and with the channel and growing it, um, and I can chime in after with what we do with Time to Train Fitness to create different revenue streams that it's not just YouTube, but uh, what are some of those other items other than having the monetized channel that have helped you guys make this a career, make this a business? Um, obviously, the YouTube, the the exposure can start leading to brand deals, to things like that. But we just kind of started basically making every decision based off of our community. 
we didn't again like going back to the to the give and don't sell we didn't we didn't approach any like anything from a monetization point of view we approached it from what could our entire community benefit from um and does it fit with what we're doing so mm-hmm. I'll give I'll give you an example. We just had a conversation with an app just recently and the app was it was a I'm not going to say a diet, but it's it's kind of a in the nutrition space it's a kind of a tracker and a into this I don't want to give it away mm-hmm. because I, the app is <laughs> phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Right? When it comes to I'm sure you've been like intermittent fasting before, but the app is a really good app and Kaylee Kaylee's into intermittent fasting. She kind of cycles through it every once in a while. Um, she knows what she's doing. She tried, um, she tried some things out, really liked it. But is that something that you could take to your entire community and recommend for every person in the community? The answer was no. Right. So maybe we could recommend that product to those who are interested in it. But if, if it doesn't fall in line with your entire community, you know, we're not going to do that just on a monetization point of view. So that's one thing that we passed up. And um, if you watch Kaylee's channels, where one of our um, brand deals is Shimano, um, everyone that rides an indoor bike can benefit from indoor cycling shoes. And luckily for us, the best cycling shoe that Kaylee's tried reached out to us for a brand partnership, right? Mm-hmm. And that that's kind of what we looked at. Like, yes, it is the best performing shoe that Kaylee's ever tried. And yes, everyone in the community can benefit from an indoor cycling shoe. So again, that's basing those decisions around your community and building based off of that, as opposed to like, is that another stream of revenue? Mm -hmm. I like that. And before we jump into my next question with it, I feel like taking that one step further um, that many people will go through is, is being selective with it. I think that that's the part that I can share with it is being selective with it because you will get um, one of the, I guess it's kind of a joke that I've shared with Jason prior to uh, starting this episode is that they are, it's not a joke, it's a reality, is that they are miles ahead of where I am with time to train fitness. And at the moment, we are getting lower level uh, affiliate stuff sent to us and it's more just no, we still s- get those too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, you be selective and you think about your brand. You think about, I like how you referenced the community of it. Can your people benefit from it? And sometimes it's just being patient, knowing that things will come and knowing that you're on the right path. I think that's the, the thing to take away is that you're on a path where companies do want to reach out to you, that you guys are doing something special that it can be that little motivating factor for anybody that's just starting out or maybe thinking, oh my goodness, I've been doing these videos for so long and where do I go? And the once these things start to happen, these little uh, markers, I'll say, these come up and just a little reminder, you're on it. Just keep going. Keep making that content. Keep looking for ways to improve. Look at your workouts, all these kinds of things because you're starting down a path that's going to take a while. And so... I can definitely help in that way. And uh, now going to a little bit of the analytic side and the tools that are actually in YouTube Studio. So if you're listening and you don't know what YouTube Studio is, it's part of, if you're uploading videos, it's where you can manage your, your content that's on there. You can look at your analytics. You can design your channel, how it looks, all these kinds of things. Jason, what are some of your favorite tools actually inside of YouTube Studio? Um, man, I <laughs> love analytics. Mm -hmm. And I love one of my favorite things in the morning is, is I get up really early. I have to be, my commute to work is an hour long. So I get up at, uh, geez, I get up at 3.30 (laughs) AM, I make my coffee and I come down to the computer and I'll, I'll kind of just listen. I know, doesn't it? But I go to bed (laughs) super early. Like it's way past my bedtime right now. Um, (laughs) the, so I'll, I'll log into YouTube and I'll, I'll check everything check emails, respond to some emails. Um, but yeah, I'll dig into kind of analytics and I'll, I'll dig, I'll play around with those. But th- yeah, a couple of things that I look at the most obvious are, are a click through rate, 
and audience retention. Mm -hmm. Um, those are the two things that you can focus on and there's not a, a standard for click through, click through rate. There's not a standard for audience retention. It's just like you tell a client in the gym, you know, be better than you were the day before yesterday, do one more rep today than you did yesterday, you know? So it's just improving those slowly over time. Um, and then trying different things we've tried over the, the life of Kaylee Cohen cycling. We've tried different, different things in the intros. We've done some outtakes in the intros. We've done, tried doing little hooks and skits and logos and just kind of comparing those and see how the audience retention rate is. Um, average view duration is actually what I'm looking at there, but Mm -hmm. Um, what is the third one? I thought there were three mm -hmm. again, it's late here. It's past my bedtime. So <laughs> brain's not operating at a hundred percent right now, but actually, can I go back to one thing that we were talking about before when, when you were talking about kind of comparing, Yeah, you know, Shimano is one of our, one yeah. of our, um, channel sponsors and, and the relationship that we built there going into 2022 this year, I'm doing a lot of deliverables for Shimano, whether it's photos or uh, videos for them. And I, I want to say, even though that I'm struggling with this at the moment, because the pressure, like once you start getting bigger, I know everyone says like, oh, if I only had a hundred thousand subscribers or oh, if only we're getting a million views or whatever, that, oh, it would be easy. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely not. The pressure is is uh is pretty intense mm -hmm. i spent 12 years in the army and i've been deployed and i've been all over the place and the the pressure of doing this kind of thing is very similar to the to that um mm -hmm. so when it goes to comparing yourself i i'll try to go onto youtube and i'll learn you know how to shoot products or how to make videos for products or i'll try to search around for inspiration to challenge my creative side or inspire my creativity. And, um, and then what I end up doing is killing my confidence because there are such good filmmakers on YouTube <laughs> and such good photographers. And this is something that I didn't really dive into until Kaylee started her channel. So I'm only about two years into the filmmaking and photography side of things. Um, but, yeah, it's finding inspiration without comparing yourself. Yeah. And I think comparing yourself like that is is a huge, you know, punch to the gut to your creati creative side. Um, so I'm still struggling with that a lot too. I'll get myself into creative blocks and then the pressure starts building and I don't know what I'm going to do. And then I end up going for a walk at sunrise with a camera and <laughs> just kind of getting out and not comparing myself. That's, that's what brings that creative side kind of back. And that's where I started getting inspiration for different things. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that, that comparing yourself to other people thing that it does nothing, but, and you can take that to Instagram too, where people are comparing their bodies to other people's bodies. And we just know that that's a rabbit hole that just, it's not good for anyone. So yeah, mm -hmm. try to stay away from comparing yourself to other people. Uh, each person has their own story. They're going to grow at their own rate. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate you sharing that that realness um, on this episode and with it uh, for yourself too. That the the pressure of it. I I think you are uh, spot on. That the pressure builds as you gain more subscribers. You have more people looking at your content, and there is an element of. I'm sure it helped you get there too, is that you want to be, I don't like using this word perfectionist, but you want your content to be as best as possible. So you're editing it and checking and you're looking up new stuff because you want it to sound, look, and keep pushing that boundary of it. And I think that that pressure builds up for a lot of us. And I mean, yeah. I, I know that you and I are different in terms of that we watch a lot of different YouTube. Like I not only do I use YouTube as a tool to uh, look up things, look up how to film things, edit little tricks, all that kinds of stuff, but I also use it as a way for entertainment as well. I watch a lot of stuff in 
movies, comic book stuff, and uh, and just watching how also they film stuff. And I'm sure that they feel the same stuff that they have to constantly because it's become part of their their business. This is their business. This is their baby. This is why we get into it. So I love the realness that you shared there and what you do to alleviate it. Because some people, I not some, I know there will be people listening that they're in a creative rut. And I've heard that a lot over these last couple months with holiday season, but also with instructors too, that I've, I've told instructors before how if you feel that pressure building for filming something, just don't film. I, I believe truly that it'll show up on the screen that if you are feeling that pressure too much, that you got to make your workout perfect or you, you feel that it's just, it's too much for you. Take a second, do what you need to get yourself in the right mental state to keep pushing forward. Don't let it eat you up. Yeah. So I, I like how you shared that right there. And I, I can. Like, yeah. Funny story is right after we monetized in 2020, we had a beginner ride that, that started taking off and you see in the analytics, the little graph, and it just makes it like upward peak like that. <laughs> I'm looking at it for a minute and I'm like, Kaylee, look at this. And, and you know, whenever you, whenever you have a video go quote mm -hmm. viral, right? It's all relative to your community. But when you have a video that performs better than the others, it's always a month or two after you publish it. It's not, you don't publish it. <laughs> and it's like, Oh, this one's going viral. <laughs> it's, it, um, this was targeted in search. And then, um, I think pop sugar did an article and, that video was recommended in it and then Healthline did one and that video was a part of it too. So it was, it was basically making the right content at the right time. And there were a lot of the right viewer at the right time. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm looking at this and I see it spike up and I'm like, Kaylee, look at this. And Kaylee's like, Oh yay, look at that. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 that's not okay. We're not good enough for that yet. Like I don't want this many views yet. We're not mm -hmm. that good. Right. So it's, I don't, uh, you're never ready for it. And I'm still not, I still don't consider what we're doing at the, like the quality at where we mm -hmm. should be, because I'm always comparing, you know, our stuff to other people's stuff and like, man, they're mm -hmm. really good. I have a lot of learning to do. So yeah, I'm never really ready for the, the, uh, the exposure, or the, the views or the, you know, as big as it's gotten, but I do like the behind the scenes stuff, the analytics. I love the creativity side. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, is fun. Yeah. I think um, something that I'm sure you guys do too is like I compare myself a lot to my older content. Like when we first started with putting more emphasis on YouTube, which was last year and just yeah. thinking, oh my, why didn't I color balance that? Oh, why, why is my camera like, why is it tilted that way? Like I literally just beat myself up on it, especially when some of it, that's thousands and thousands of views. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like, what was I thinking? Like, why didn't I do better on that? And so it's <laughs> I feel like we all that are creating content for YouTube, we go through those things where we're just looking at other people, what they're doing. And then just looking back and I was like, oh, what, what, what was my thought process for that? And uh, you're not alone there. You're definitely not alone there. One of the first things that I do when I find a new channel is I go to their videos and then sort by <laughs> oldest first. And I'll go to their first three mm -hmm. videos and, uh, and I'll watch those I'm like, wow. Yeah. That's you've come a long way in two <laughs> yeah. years or three years or whatever. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I like it. it. I'll have to, to try that. Kaylee's are not good. <laughs> the, the first videos we did were not good. <laughs> People still watch them though. It's yeah. insane. I have to say that the, uh, the beginner ride that you're talking about, I one, I honestly, when you say that, I'm like, is that the workout that I found you guys from? Um, I, I, I believe the reason, um, I started following you guys was that it, it was a setup video. And then I think it was probably a recommended video right after that was a beginner ride. Since I just mm -hmm. got into cycling, you got to find a way to, how, how do you set your bike up? What are you doing? And so I watched that video and then I went into a, a ride right after and then told my wife about it. And then we started following the channel. Um, it's got over a million oh. views now, which is insane. <laughs> In, that's, it is insane. That's yeah, insane. Yeah. So a, another thing that I think we should talk about for anyone that's looking to of doing YouTube or making that a passion is you have to have almost thick skin or 
enough discipline to know when to just ignore a <laughs> comment or delete a mm -hmm. comment and not reply back or not get sucked into that, whatever it is. <laughs> um, the internet is a, as good as it is. There is some nasty to yeah. the internet. Uh, it is. And don't let, don't let that affect your attitude or your perspective or your view at all. If you, if you're on YouTube for the right intentions and you're there to improve people's lives and you are improving people's lives, the one or two comments that you may see that are negative. Um, yeah, just delete or block or, and move on. Don't let that affect your mood because some people I know it does and, and it can affect people's mental health, which is another thing that could be a podcast all in itself. Mm -hmm. No, you, you are a hundred percent right because those come with views and more subscribers comes more eyes. That's part of YouTube is that once people that YouTube starts seeing, that people like your content, they're going to show it to more people. So, of course, the negative will come in. So, how do you handle that? What is your thought process? What do you do? What are the actions that you take? So, I like how you said, ignore it, block it, delete it. I personally laugh at some of them sometimes. I I don't engage. I, that's just part of my personality. Yeah, we we love constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. If if you if you can present um, you know constructive criticism in a you know, in a way that's not rude or demanding, you know, we'll absolutely, we'll, we'll respond and we'll, we'll talk about it and we'll look at implementing it. But, um, some, we've had some just kind of trolls that are just explicit, mm -hmm. just block right away. Yeah. But it comes in all shapes and colors. And that's one of the, the, the pieces with like, I feel like cycling and not to throw the cycling world under the, the bus with it. I just feel like they're compared to some of the other areas of the fitness industry uh, that I feel like some of the trolls come that they want to point out that way that you're riding or they believe that you should be riding a certain way. And it's just like, oh, my goodness, there's so many things that you could be doing yeah. with your life. But this is what you want to do is commenting about a cycling ride. Like, come on, guys, get move on with your life. And uh, but uh, one piece that I do want to get from you here is about. Uh, the decision and even what you what you went through uh, personally with you being more a part of the streams that you are now part of the streams you are growing your own following too and that is something that I think is interesting with you being the guest what was kind of the thought process to for you to be part of that that story that entertainment with the rides I think we we knew we wanted to start live streaming mm -hmm. in 2020. So I think coming towards the end of 2020, I started looking at researching how to build a live stream. I was watching live streams. And one thing that I noticed was the live streams where there were two people, they kind of had a better flow mm -hmm. to them. And it was a lot easier, but it is hard in front of a camera, especially it's one thing recording when you can just, okay, like I'm going to take a cut here. I'm going to start mm -hmm. over in a live stream. You don't get that ability, right? So I didn't want to put Kaylee in a position where she felt the pressure to carry the show on or to make it entertaining or to whatever the case was. So I definitely wanted to be kind of there to carry or to segue into other things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, you know, you know what I'm saying? To add a conversation so it wasn't so yeah. one-sided. So it is kind of more dynamic in a two-sided broadcast. We also did it um, mainly for the community. So it was a place where we really wanted to have the live chat and we wanted to interact with the live chat. Um, and it was more of a hangout with a cycling class in the middle. So we kind of did some announcements in the beginning, made a couple of mm -hmm. jokes then the middle portion was the cycling workout. And in the end, we did a Q&A and just kind of hung out with the, the crowd and turned mm -hmm. some music on and kind of make jokes at each other, whatever. Uh, and then Kaylee started dressing me up. <laughs> uh, she dressed me up as a Oompa Loompa for Halloween. <laughs> and then I was an elf for Christmas. Dig it. And then she started throwing towels at my face, <laughs> like wet, sweaty oh, towels. No. And <laughs> now, yeah, now I'm the, I'm the catch-all guy that... Behind the behind the screen, that gets stuff thrown at him and dresses up like an elf. So <laughs> well, that, 
that's entertainment. It's uh, I dig it. It, it is. No, it's fun. It's it, fun. It, we went we went live every weekend. We didn't miss a single week in it over a year for all of 2021. Wow. So I think we we quit just before Christmas. Took that two mm -hmm. weeks off at Christmas time, but we started at that time the year before. So yeah, we went full year without missing a weekend, even through yeah. COVID. Anybody listening just knows the pressure of stream, of streaming, live streaming. And with it, the quality that you guys put out is just tremendous. And all the items that you talked about today are part of that. Talking about the community, talking about the story building, that interaction back and forth is part of a story. It's part of the entertainment, the engagement of it that leads back to the community. And you guys are giving something out for free that is quality. It's quality stuff. Um, I think that there's many pieces that tie back to the rest of the episode here. And it's a way to for people to think about it. Uh, one piece before we wrap it up here is with the live streaming and the engagement and uh, making that decision to do it. I mean, there's so many pieces that are part of it that uh, I know I already said it, that it's, it's super stressful to think about. And with the live stream aspect, there has to be, am I, I'm guessing there has to be a prep part of it. That's one of the things that I've worked on this last year with uh, the different podcasts that I do. Two of them are fitness related. One is a movie podcast, but it's, I share this for this podcast that it, with my movie podcast that I really realized how important preparation is. The preparation for it and all the prep that goes into it, whether it's writing out bullets or just the organization of it makes it so much better. And that's when you said how the playing off each other, that is a part of it. That's part of the preparation and the the way that we format a podcast. And so for your guys' streaming, how much of the preparation is done prior? Do you know when she's going to say something or what workouts are coming out or where you were going to chime in for something? How much is that prep? We're still finding out kind of how each other works, even after like almost 10 years of mm -hmm. marriage and three years of doing this or two years of doing this. But um, Kaylee really enjoys planning workouts and I enjoy the tech side. So we kind of separate that a little bit or I, I kind of like the strategy side to that too. So we've kind of separated that. So that kind of leads into how we prepare for a live stream. So Kaylee will plan her workouts. So she's always throughout the week, she's planning workouts, whether it's a part of the workout program that we're doing because she is a cycling and strength um, program. So she has a cycling channel and a strength channel. So she's, and we're publishing three strength workouts a week, plus one cycling workout, and then going live on each one on Saturday. So she's constantly planning workouts throughout the week. We have dry race boards in here, so she'll start filling them out. And that's what she uses while she's filming or while we're live streaming as her kind of guidelines on that dry mm -hmm. race board. I'll take that same dry race board and I'll build my outline mm -hmm. over here. The cycling workouts, it's a little bit more um, it's a little bit more active back here because we have different resistance call outs and timers and, uh, different camera angles that I switch back and forth and different graphics and all that stuff. So I have to know kind of when things are coming for each mm -hmm. song. Um, so I'll, I'll make my outline based off of what she writes on her board. And then the, the strength workouts is a little bit easier. Um, they're just 30 minute live streams and they're typically like, a uh, AMRAP style full body dumbbell workout. So there'll be a timer on the board and just start knocking out reps and then rest period timer and reps. The, the prep, it's probably, I, I really wish we could streamline a studio with permanent fixtures <laughs> for cameras, but we're constantly using the cameras, putting them up, taking them down, putting them up, taking them down. So the prep time isn't very streamlined. Mm -hmm. So it's probably two hours of prep, at least an hour no less than an hour of prep before we go wow. live. Yeah. And that's rushing. That's impressive though. It's, I know that people listening, they have their own the prep and they're like, probably wondering, oh, why is this is taking too long for me? No, like that's either on point or hey, that's how long it takes to put something out that's quality. So it's good that you shared that. And I know that you and I can go for a long time. So we're going to go to our podcast takeaways with 
This one, I switch it up. I, I'm going to switch it up with the way that the typical question comes in. Jason, what are three myths about building a YouTube business? Oh, man. Three <laughs> myths. Um, uh, the first myth we already talked about, gear is not important. Mm -hmm. um, so story is actually more important than mm -hmm. gear. So there's the first myth. Gear is not important. The second myth is you don't have to be an authority to start on yeah. YouTube. Right, build a community about your personal development through the through the industry or what, whatever it is that you want to share, whatever your passion is. You don't have to be an authority in that passion uh, as long as you're passionate about it and you want to share that with other like minded people. Uh, you'll hear it on the Internet if you listen to any YouTube, how to start on YouTube. Um, they'll say you're viable, attract your tribe. Right. And uh, just get on YouTube and start talking and you'll attract like minded people with the same passions. And that's where community is is mm -hmm. built. The third myth, uh, man, um, the third myth is YouTube is not crowded or saturated. Yeah. There we go. It's not too crowded. YouTube actually. Yeah, let's talk about mm -hmm. this real quick. You remember when YouTube started and YouTube was where you went to see funny cat videos, <laughs> right? And then Google transformed the Google bought YouTube and now YouTube turned into what the, the second largest search engine in the world. So if you have a problem with your, your pipes in your house and you don't know how to fix it, <laughs> you go to YouTube, mm -hmm. right? Like you'll find, you'll find it on YouTube, anything, anything you can search, you can find on YouTube. I think we're seeing another level of maturity in YouTube and it's not done growing. It's, it's only going to get bigger, but now we're seeing what should be network television productions free on YouTube. Right. Um, I, I don't want to start giving away examples, but we're seeing like, you know, seasons and episodes of shows that are absolutely good enough to be on cable television or HBO or Netflix or whatever the case is, and they're on YouTube. So it's, it's profitable. Uh, there's enough reason for you to be on YouTube and it's only going to get bigger. And just because it gets bigger, doesn't mean there's more competition. Yep. We're all different. Um, you have something different to bring to the table. So yeah. go for it. The last one is what I'm going to chime in on because one, you hit on the nose, second largest search engine. It's global. You're not just reaching in a local audience with it. You are global with it. And I mean, one of the pieces that I wanted to chime in earlier on in the episode that with YouTube Studio too, is when you're trying to learn your audience, YouTube Studio is where you go. You could see your percentage breakdown of female versus male. You can see your age demographics. You can get a better idea of who's tuning in and then try to tailor some of that. And so it's a great way yep. to, uh, just hone in on that information, know more about your audience and just grow from it that way. And with YouTube, it's just growing, it's evolving. You're you're hundred percent correct that there are things. And I question all the time, like, how did this get a YouTube series? Like, I know I could create something way better than this. Like what is going on on, on Netflix? But uh, Jason, before we sign off on here, can you give all the information about social media, website, all that kind of great stuff? Uh, yeah, let's see. Kaylee Cohen cycling is where you can find fun, motivating and energizing indoor cycling workouts along with time to train fitness. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> also some good instructors there. Um, Brooke is doing really good, by the way. Thank you. We, man. we watch that. Brooke and we watch, yeah, we see what you guys are posting. We, I study the whole industry <laughs> and I think it's, uh, it's amazing. That's the only way to increase your total addressable market is, is get everyone's get everyone mm -hmm. out there. Right. So yeah. Um, Kaylee Cohen strength for strength workouts. And that's, yeah, to supplement the, the cycling workouts. So, uh, Kaylee A Cohen on Instagram and J Cohen seven eleven on Instagram. Go. I'll give Kaylee. I, I don't need any, I don't need any <laughs> of the, I just want to talk about it. Yeah. Like if you have some questions about YouTube, yeah, let me know. We'll talk about YouTube. Jason, thank you for coming on the Kips podcast. Oh my goodness. So many gems inside this episode and motivation and different pieces. And thank you for sharing about yourself. That's what really, I feel like tied this episode together, not just with the tips, but the process that you went through. And I think that's important for a lot of people to hear. So thank you, my friend. Yeah. Same time tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>